this episode of This Old Bike, we're going to teach you why it's not a really good idea to leave your motorcycle behind your house for five years. How you doing everybody? It's your boy, Dusty, out here on the fabulous West Coast, where it's bright and sunny yet again. All you guys on the East Coast that got all that snow, I'm sorry. We could use that water though, you want to ship some of that here, we'd love to have it. But you know, it, it's another beautiful sunny day. The Pegasi have moved all the clouds away. Princess Celestia has deemed it just another sunny day in California. Amazing that. But you don't want to hear about the weather out here, no. You don't want to hear about the weather. You don't want to hear about the bike that the other bike. That, remember that little video I just showed you, the one with the guy with the bike and the fibers. He had two of them. He gave me the other one to fix too. <sighs> Boy, that guy. But anyway, that being said, we have with you today a gentleman of great renown in the voice acting community. Goes way back, way back. Not only, not only has he worked on such shows as Dragon Ball Z. But he's also a voice director on some of your favorite programs, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and Lilith's Pet Shop. I talk about one Mr. Terry Klassen. Mr. Terry. Hey, how you doing, Dusty? What's up, my boy? I'm just hanging. It's sunny in Vancouver. Sunny in Vancouver! <laughs> yes. It's awesome. I want I want to be there. I want, to, gotta, I want gotta, to visit. Everybody's got to come out everybody's here. Come out here. Great. Absolutely. So how is your day going? It is going really good. Yeah? I heard you had a session this morning. I had a session this morning. We're doing a, uh, it was a Christmas special that's going to come out on Cartoon mm. Network in, uh, in uh, well, obviously Christmas time. Obviously Christmas so time. it's just a one-off. One-off thing. Yeah. Work is always good. No matter, no matter what time of year it is. Let's do Christmas in, in January <laughs> for next year. Yeah, let's do that. Exactly. Exactly. So, hey, we're going to start right off with some questions. Um, I've got my standard box stock number one question for everybody now. It's, it's, we, it's sort of interesting coming up with the answers to this question for all these people who've been in the industry for a while. But what are some of your earliest memories of cartoons or comic books that you enjoyed as a kid? Oh. oh cool. Well, that's a really good question. My, as far as comic books go, I mean, I was... I was always the guy that read would read comedy comedy uh, comic books like mm -hmm. you know the Archies yeah. and, and stuff like that. When the, I wasn't a real superhero guy mm -hmm. because there was too many words. I didn't mind looking <laughs> at pictures. I love the artistry in, in, in the uh, in the um, you know the superhero ones, but I like sort of the funny stuff. And then um, as far as animation went, the cartoons when I yeah, was a kid, yeah. I watched everything from people wouldn't remember this Tom Slick and obviously mm -hmm. Tennessee Tuxedo, but my oh, yeah. favorite all-time favorite was obviously the Warner Brothers stuff mm -hmm. uh, which was just I mean the 1930s and 40s 40s sorry 40s yeah. and 50s Warner Brothers stuff was just the the ultimate in animation yeah there's a lot of great writing in there just funny oh. funny stuff I mean awesome. if, if some of these young kids if you aren't going back I know you can't find it anymore it's like on on like some off-brand cartoon network thing you know boomerang I think is where it's on now but right. if you if you can go find the Warner Brothers collection DVDs, go buy them, because that's the only way you can watch them now. When we were yeah, when we were they, kids, they edit them. They edit them. It's make like them politically correct. Oh goodness, no! You got to find some of those unpolitically correct ones, that are just freaking hilarious. I mean, you're not you shouldn't laugh at some of this stuff nowadays. But it was funny then because it's a different era. 
Uh, they, did one, they did one of the most famous ones was Bugs Bunny against Hitler. Oh yeah, or Bugs Bunny nips the Bugs Bunny nips the nips. Yeah. Yeah. If you can find a copy of that, wow. <laughs> It's it's you know what it's it's sort of the 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 sword and the stone because you can't find these things anymore. It's the same way if as if you go to Disneyland and ask them for uh, Song of the South. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll never find that. No, you can get it in Japan, but you can't get it in America no more. No. no. Um, second question: What influenced you to take up a career in voice? Uh, well, you know what? It, it, like a lot of people, not like a lot of people. I was a radio announcer. I worked in, uh, in you know, in a whole bunch of different cities, like from uh, from Winnipeg to Calgary to Toronto, and then here in Vancouver. Just when I moved out of Vancouver, um, I was did part time radio. Mm. I was sort of getting out of it, and I I did voiceovers. Okay. I, like, I like I did television um, and radio commercials. Mm-hmm. And it just went, and it, it went on. You know, I just did tons and tons and tons of this. That would have been in the uh, late '80s. And then all of a sudden, there was Doug Parker. He was auditioning a show called Camp Candy, and I was sitting in the lobby of uh, Little Mountain Sound, and that's mm-hmm. a pretty famous uh, recording studio because, like, Aerosmith and uh, Bon Jovi, mm-hmm. ACDC, they all recorded there. But anyway, sitting in the lobby, and uh, Doug asked me, "Hey, Terry, you want to read for a cartoon?" And my first audition, I got a, a job doing a cartoon. And back then, we had like 20, maybe 20 people that were auditioning for cartoons. Wow. And it just took off. And then I left the, I left Vancouver a, l- a little bit. And then I came back and just, you know, loved doing voices. It was just so awesome. Yeah. That's, that's sort of falling into it, as, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you've not only been a voice actor, but you've written, yeah. director, Cool. Yeah. Producer on yeah. on Dragon Ball Z of all things. Um, yeah, I know. it was kind of weird. That was through uh, yeah. um, crap. I can't remember the names. Funimation out of Funimation, that. yeah. Or Fort Worth, yeah. yeah. Which of these particular things that you've done do you like to do the most? You know what? Honestly, I like writing the best. I co-created a series. You didn't get it in the states, but it went around the world called Ivana the Yukon. Hmm. And it ran 52 episodes. And wow. it, was, it was big in Britain, Russia, in, in Australia. It was weird. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> I don't even know. Maybe we'll, it is. We'll have to figure that one out. Um, okay, having been involved with a lot of the classic anime series like Project Echo, right? Mobile Suit Gundam, yeah. Ranma One Half, yeah. and Dragon Ball Z. Much yeah. like, I think you were actually also involved in Robotech. If I, may, well, I, I can't remember. Way that. back in the day, but when yeah, I grew I was up, the, voice of, the original voice of Krillin and, and yeah, uh, Vigil Rosa Krillin and, and yep, Krillin and I believe uh, Master Yoshi. Yeah, the old guy, Master Yoshi, who was as lecherous as they come. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, have you watched any of the new anime shows like Bleach or One Piece or any of these new shows that are coming out and, that have been? I mean, those aren't those have been around for a couple of years, but. Some of the ones that are coming through, um, in your opinion, um, state of anime as it's coming versus past and now, better, worse, indifferent. Um, what do you think? You know what? That, that's a that's a really good question. I'm I, you know first of all, I'm amazed that anime has hung on this long. Oh yeah. And, and it's unfortunate that that I wish in North America we had more serious animation because uh, the Japanese are brilliant at story arcs. Mm-hmm. You know, like they'll take a story and it over a ton of episodes. This is where you know it's supposed to. This is where it's going to end up on. We do a series called Max Steel, and it kind of has mm-hmm. a story arc over twenty six episodes. Right. And I really, I really like the the, the the writing on it. There's such a reverence in Japan for the artistry of it, mm-hmm. and 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 the writers. Whereas uh, I guess the voice actors are up there too. But I haven't really followed anime. I did ra- uh, the the Ranma one half for like forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over a hundred episodes. Yeah, it was amazing and it was yeah. fun and and but I haven't been involved in uh, you know because we mm. ADR'd it up here and okay. I really haven't watched any of it because uh, it never. I, I sort of like first voice acting if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I I grew up with uh, a show called Battle of the Planets. Right. Which was a redub uh, by Sandy Frank by, of uh, Science and Ninja Team Gatchaman, which was which came out the same people that did uh, Jungle Emperor and those shows from back then, and it had like 200 episodes yeah. in Japan, and, and they cut it into like you know 26 episodes or, or 
something like that. But it just it was just a wonderful show. But it was yeah. so stinking violent. <laughs> <laughs> they had... Well, that Funimation actually had to, they had an art department that they actually had to go in yeah. and replace cells. I remember this one scene where a guy's head got cut off and you yeah. could see like his spine and, mm-hmm. and all the blood and everything. And yeah. <laughs> they had to reanimate yep. that for Cartoon Network. Yeah, it was the same thing back, but well, this was back in the 70s. I mean, I was watching, wow. I was watching this in like 74, right? And they were, they completely reanimated it. You know, they took, took out sections and reanimated this like robot guy called Seven's Arc Seven. <laughs> Who did who did all of the you know he was the narrator, and they would animate really it was crude too it was really crude animation you saw this beautiful Japanese animation then you had this crude Seven Zark Seven looked like it was done by a twelve year old <laughs> stuck in the middle area what the heck even at my age I knew it was wrong it's like where's the rest of the cartoon come on um, I, I miss cartoons like that I do sorry I miss I mean they just did Peabody yeah. and Sherman now I yeah. Mean, it, you know, and, and that, that was wasn't that part of Tennessee Tuxedo? Oh yeah, and, and Chumley. Chumley, yeah. Yeah, Chumley, Chumley and Tex, Tennessee Tuxedo and uh, Top Cat. Yeah. Top Cat. Um, who else was in there? Um, geez, I can't remember. Tennessee Tuxedo, well, but he was Tom funny. Tom Slick was a part of. Yep. Uh, uh, oh crap, I can't remember. There was two other cartoons. Tom Slick was stuck mm-hmm. in the middle. There was three all together. Yeah. Another show they auditioned went. Remember the ones that it was a live action show. These three guys that were dressed in uh, in furry costumes. <laughs> what was that called? It was done in the seventies. Oh, there was a ton of those. Uh, geez, there was there was Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. There was Banana Splits. Oh yeah. There was Banana uh, Splits is what I was talking about. Banana Splits. The Banana Splits is freaking hilarious. You go yeah. you go back and watch some of that stuff that Sid and Marty Croft did. Right. And it's like. What kind of substances were they taking to write this stuff? <laughs> Lidsville of one, one. Oh my goodness! If you remember Lidsville, um, crazy, crazy. Uh, speaking of Dragon Ball Z, let me get uh, Krillin up on a screen here. Um, when you were working on that title um, back in the day, did it feel like it would turn into the worldwide sensation that Dragon Ball Z is? You know, nothing does. I'll tell you what, we do some cartoons here. We do some when we're, we're in the studio working. And there was one show that we did called, oh, crap. Um, uh, it was a dog show. I, I got to remember the name. I'll, I'll have to remember the name of it. But it was, we, there was a, a writer named, oh, crap. I can't remember. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I can't remember her name. It was so hilarious. We were laughing at it. It was out of California. Um, the writer on it and now works on Max Steel, and I mm-hmm. should remember his name too. He was just a great writer, and we thought this show was going to be a huge, huge hit. And you know what? You mm-hmm. can't find anything on it on the internet. Wow. I have to find out the name of the show. I, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna go right now into okay. my. Uh, Why well, you want to ask me another question? But I will go into my resume and I will find that show. Find for that you. show. Okay. Cool. Uh, moving on. Um, Ed. Ed and Eddie. Right. Okay. Every we love Ed, Ed, and Eddie around here. We've had Sipsy on the show. We've had uh, a couple of the other guys on the show. When you when the subject of Eddie's brother, okay, right. came up on Ed, Ed, and Eddie, yeah. uh, did Danny have a certain way about that character? You know, because the whole buildup of Eddie has a brother that you didn't see for seasons, Eddie you know, ever. and ever, and then all of a sudden he shows up. Did Danny have like this way that he should act or sound, and did he like? throw a lot of that, you know, he should do this, he should do this, or did he give you free reign to, like, come up with that character? You know, Danny, Danny Antonucci, he's actually a friend, and he, he's a really good guy. He really has tight reign on his show. Mm-hmm. He, when he would do the storyboards, when we went in to record a show, mm-hmm. he knew exactly what he wanted to do on that show, yeah. and uh, it was very precise. It was it was a really tightly scripted show, and you know what? You know we do things called pickups. Uh-huh. Actually, in My Little Pony, we don't we don't do a lot of pickups, but uh, which is good. But that show had almost zero pickups to do because Danny knew exactly what he wanted to do. Nice. Must must be really nice to be able to lucid dream like that, so you know exactly what you want. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he Danny really, 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 really reins it in. Oh, hang on, I will, I will hang this up. Yes. Uh, hang on. It's not Here me. Oh, wait a minute, it's not me. Let okay. me check. No, I'm not calling. Okay. <laughs> I should have thrown. I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No, you know, it, it's a live show. You know, that's 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 where the fun comes from. It's like it's a live show. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, okay, next. It seems. That you like to voice background characters in almost every show you've you've directed, because right. you, you did Young Hoops, 
in My Little Pony, uh, various little characters in Lilo's Pet Shop. Um, does that come from wanting to keep your voice chops in, or just you're not getting the voice that you need out of the, the room full of actors you have at the time? That is an awesome question. That's a really good question. I'll tell you, uh, I'm not going to name names, but quite often there's a lot of voice directors when they cast a show, mm -hmm. they will cast themselves in the show. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe in that. Okay. I, I think that, you know, there's enough voice things. I mean, I would love to do it, and I'm not saying that I would never, ever do it. Mm -hmm. But I just don't believe in doing that because I think it's the people... Uh, the voice actors should be doing that and I'm the voice director on that project mm -hmm. so that's why I mean yeah when I, I've even said to the actors I say when when a show comes along and there's an incidental character I'll definitely come up and do it because I like doing it I still you know like you said keeping your jobs in it but mm -hmm. I don't want to go in there and take things away from voice actors right and it's not that I'm gonna be that great a voice either I shouldn't you know highlight myself that that I'm the greatest guy in the world because mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm just saying that I like doing it. By the way, I found out that show I was looking for. Mm -hmm. It was Fat Dog Mendoza. I have never even heard of that. Exactly. Look it up on the web. <laughs> okay. Like one Fat dog, dog Mendoza. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Hey guys. Yes. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> What's up, Scurry? Uh, uh, Terry's voice is coming out a little quiet on okay. the show. Is from what really? I heard. Okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. Let, let me uh, let me fix that. I know people can still hear, but there's others who have to turn off the uh, the volume without Dusty's booming voice. So, well, let me, let me back off my <laughs> voice. Let me turn up that voice. Okay, well... Is that uh, better? How's that, people? Does that work uh, better for you? Um, I'm waiting for them to respond. Much better. Yeah, there we go. There we go. We got okay, it. cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm going to skedaddle. Thanks, buddy. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you, thank you, my wonderful, adoring audience, for helping me with my audio. We never, we never, we, for the ones that didn't hear, we never really said anything. Yeah, we never said anything. Up to this point, Terry's been quiet. I've been exactly. talking. I've been talking to myself. Sure. Absolutely, because I love, I love hearing the sound of my dolphin tones. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Ah, uh, next. Uh, being uh, a wonderful casting director on such awesome shows as Johnny Test. What is it you look for in new voice talent when you're auditioning for a show? What should aspiring voice actors be working on, in your opinion? You know what? That, again, that, that is a really good question. The thing is that when you go into an audition, A, be prepared. Do, read, read, you know, whatever the sides, whatever the description on the top of the sides, read them digest them and then read the sides really read what the sides are about you know if it says the guy sneezes and it says a line a lot of actors don't do that they just read the lines Oops. and you know you got to think about what is that character what how does that character work with other characters mm -hmm. you know basically you know what it says on the side so really read those things over mm -hmm. and and this is to me the most important thing about doing an audition is you're going to come up with a voice right up out of your head you're gonna say yep that's the voice don't go with that voice because you know what everybody and their dog is gonna do that voice okay you know another thing too is it used to be I remember back in the the late 80s and 90s that you know it'd say on the side mm -hmm. a Christopher Lloyd type voice well we'd be sitting in a okay. casting session yeah everybody and their dog would come in and they would do a Christopher Lloyd ripoff okay you know from back to the future and yeah. you're sort of going oh not again. And then somebody would come out and have this refreshing, goofy, crazy voice. And, okay, that's the voice. Uh -huh. And uh, then you'll hear the actors that did the Christopher voice later go, oh, that's what they wanted. And you're going, no, you got to come up with something that, you know, give us some options. Yes. What, what's, what's new? What's different? Mm -hmm. And that's what you really look for. It's it's somebody that that is, they'll give you, I'll always say, bring what you brung, whatever you practice, do that at the audition. And then, okay, let's refine that. Okay, that's not really where, where we're going. And they have to be versatile enough to come out of, you know, yeah, yeah I can try this, and then try something else. So, ha so have about 15 things in your back pocket. Three, yeah. three, three you want, but, you know, have, have some things in the back pocket in case they go, not really, but it's got to be close to this. Oh, I can do that. Pick it out of the back Who's pocket, and here it is. Yeah, who's the actor? I can't. His name escapes me right off the top. He he was on news radio, and his wife shot him. What was his name? Oh, I don't remember. I don't. I didn't watch that show. 
Well, anyway, he uh, he he was one of those guys that had. He used to go on Jay Leno, and okay. he would say, "I have six hundred voices. Pick a number. I'll do that voice for you." Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? He didn't have six hundred voices. He was just being silly. There's voice actors here that get tons of work. Yeah. They basically have three voices, mm-hmm. which are really good, and they do a variation on a whole bunch of different shows. Okay. You know, because I will hear an audition. I'll hear somebody do a bit on. Uh, littlest or uh, my little yeah, littlest pet shop, mm-hmm. and I'll hear them do that sort of same voice on on another show, mm-hmm. but it's a different character, and you know it's a different company. So, you know they they get tons of work based on on those voices, even though they're different characters. They'll say I'm doing a different voice. It's basically the same voice. So that they're doing the same style of voice, different places in the register, high, yeah, medium, should, low. Yeah, I mean if you have a certain voice that's really weird. Um, I'll give you an example. Andrea Lidman, mm-hmm. she does two characters on My Little Pony. Absolutely. And I really thought when they said she was going to do two different voices, I thought, oh, crap. Because she has a very unique voice. Mm-hmm. Having said that, and this is this is where she gets it. She does uh, Pinkie Pie and uh, Fluttershy. Correct. And, I mean, she has developed, and this is where Lauren Faust was awesome. She wrote for the characters, right? Mm-hmm. And she allowed uh, uh, Andrea really captured that and and so she understood what the characters were and that gives her different voices yeah it, it, it's crazy how you watch that show and you can't catch that as the same voice actor yeah a lot of times i mean pinkie pie is way up here and really fast and flourish is like really way down here it's almost in the same register but it's like very low register and very high register and the way it's acted can throw that voice completely into a different direction Absolutely, and that's understanding character. Same way with Ashley Ball. You would, oh, yeah. you would well, never she's... think that that high-voiced Rainbow Dash is that mid-voiced Applejack. She is so versatile, though. Yeah. Versatile. Yes. Be- being a, a lead singer to a band, you would have to be. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, when you're not working on some show or another, what do you like to do in your spare time? Ride my motorcycle. Thank you, Brohoof. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I'm yeah, no, I like riding. Uh, you know, I also I really like hockey. I like I like watching hockey. Um, I got to get a hobby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I like doing stuff like that. Yes, motorcycling and, uh, is a hobby. Actually, it's a lifestyle. It is. It is. I guess it's a lifestyle to me. But yeah, go. well, yeah, I don't go that far. I but I, I I do. I really I really enjoy it. And you know, like like I said, I got a bike down in L.A. and I love shooting. I love that in California. You can uh, yes. lane split. For now, anyway. It's well, yeah, my it. sister, she'll ride with me sometimes, and I said, does that bother you when we do it down the freeway? She goes, I close my eyes. <laughs> the problem we have up here in NorCal is all the freaking young organ donors who <laughs> wear shorts, flip-flops, and a, a tank top, but they actually wear the, the, the back brace armor over the tank top, like it's yeah. going to help you, yeah, and a helmet, and... They're splitting lanes at like seventy five when you don't need yeah. to, and it's like yeah. they're gonna they're gonna ruin it for us all. I don't have an opinion, no, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's my yeah that's my opinion. And I'm sticking to it. Um, being an old school motorcyclist, I don't like that. Um, have you seen much of our fandom? Um, and if so, what are your thoughts on uh, how big the following that show has attained? I'm not. You know what? I, I don't follow it a whole lot, but. I am amazed and and sort of, you know, it's kind of cool to realize that there's so many people that are so attached to the show. I'm amazed at how many people are out there. And I think that's great. I, I, I'm amazed. I mean, Andrea Lidman is, is always off to a new city every second week to, mm-hmm. do, to do fan stuff. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. We, we're really, we're really a, a weird bunch of nuts out here. We love, we love the people that do it. Uh, I've been trying to get you on my show for a year because and that, I, oh, I, sorry, uh, Tabitha gave me a shirt. Yeah, and uh, I'm actually holding it right now. I'm looking it up. I got to actually see it. And she said it's called. You're the, she says they call you the Dark Brony <laughs> because it's got Batman and uh, I think Pinkie Pie on the cover. Mm-hmm. Because I don't. I you know what? To be really honest, my agent was bugging me about this too. She he says, uh, Ralph. He goes, you just don't do that. Why don't you do it? And I said, I'm just not. 
I just like to be in the background. Mm-hmm. So this is really rare for me to do this. It is really rare, and I, I thank you very much, Terry, for, for doing well, this. Well, you were special. You actually were really, really pro in approaching me, and I thought that was really cool, so I said, yeah, I'll oh, do it. Oh, well, thank you. Um, we really love not only the voice actors, but the artists and the people who put the show together, because without you, it wouldn't be as good as it is. I mean, we wouldn't have really great episodes if the voice director didn't care. What well, you got it. Have you talked to uh, to the, Have you talked to Jason and Jim? I, I can't. I can't. DHX has basically forbidden me from oh, talking but they're, to them. They're really cool guys. They're I know. Really I've, guys. I've, I've, ta- I've talked to them at conventions. I'm trying really hard to get them on the show. I'm sending I'm sending letters to Hasbro saying, you know, come on, here's my entire you know back history. Watch a couple of shows. And I, I won't ask stupid questions. Thank you very much. But they want to be on the show. I'd love to have them on the show. But DHX has forbidden me from having them on the show. Oh, at, okay. at the moment, I, I, I'm working on it. I'm knocking on that door, beating my well, head against the wall. Well, I'll tell them that they send they send their love to you because they're, they're just really neat guys. Yeah, and you know great. what? They care about it too. Absolutely. And, and they get a ton of they get a ton of texts and emails mm-hmm. or whatever from fans. And again, you know, there's only so much that any of us can say about it. Oh, of course. You know, NDAs and all that kind of stuff. Can't do, yeah. can't say anything about the future, but we can talk about the past. Exactly. And, and all, all the great stuff that's going on now between the epic music, you know, the, the lyrics and the singing and the music and, and, and the awesome. I mean, the, the Sweetie Belle episode last week where Princess Luna teaches her the, the if you go down this bad road, it's going to lead to really bad things um, in her dreamscape. It's, it's a wonderful piece of writing. I mean, where do you get that kind of writing in today's cartoons? Yeah. You don't. Okay. You just don't. So it, you, you get strawberry shortcake, which is. Eh, but I never are. worked on strawberry shortcake. <laughs> it's 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 hard. Andrea Lemon works strawberry shortcake. I know she loves what goes on there, but the storytelling is a little to be right. desired. Um, as a voice director, um, do you have the opportunity to change lines if you feel that they don't suit the character? How much control do you have over that script? You know what we we do uh, not so much on My Little Pony because you know what it's pretty tightly written. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes we do change lines. Oh, just minutely because uh, there might be, you know, another line that follows it that doesn't really make any sense. Uh-huh. Uh, on Hasbro shows, they actually really, really do. You know, My Little Pony mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Little Pet Shop. They're actually really, and I'm just saying this. They really are well edited and written and stuff like that. We don't do a lot of changes, but we do make changes every so often just so it, it when when you read something out loud it's like a table read mm-hmm. you, you just notice things that you know that really doesn't work we can we can streamline that so we, we don't change story at all we just yeah. change sort of like how you say it yeah. um as far as conversationally and and uh yeah we're, we're you know there's nobody saying you can't do anything right but you know obviously We've had actors on occasion and infamous stories where people, my character would never say that. Well, we've we've had moments on My Little Pony because now they're claiming ownership to you know their yeah. characters. Okay. Uh, yeah, it does say that. Okay. There you go. Voice director yeah. putting his hoof down right now. Say the yeah, line. Exactly. You know, you know what, Peter? You're going to say yep and you're going to say nope. Okay, say it now. Say it this way. He, say it this he's, way. he's pretty. He's pretty good with that. Yes. We had one character last week on the new season. Basically, he came in for one line. Really? Yeah. One line. He's like that was it. What? Yeah, I, can, I can see. He comes in. He, he reads the script. Got one line on it. Um, what's my motivation? <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy in Montreal one time came to me and he was he had to play Santa Claus on a Christmas show. Okay. It was uh, for. Um, uh, I forget the name of the show, but it was basically he wanted to change the script because Santa wouldn't say that, and I went, "Oh, he's going to say that today." <laughs> it's crazy. That's funny. Um, last question before we go to commercial: um, If you had the opportunity to to come up with your own cartoon premise, what would it be? Oh, I got tons. Actually, I got a whole bunch of ideas. Give me your best one. I had one. You know what, you know what, no, don't, don't give me your best one. Give me your fifth best one, so somebody doesn't steal your best one. <laughs> oh, they can steal it. I don't. Care. <laughs> no, I had one that was basically called Boot Camp, and it was about uh, an ex. You know, because there's so many veterans coming back oh, from, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, different things, mm-hmm. and basically he can't get a job, and so he decides to open up a daycare. And it was sort of based on Rugrats, and okay. it was just basically uh, him opening up a daycare, and he was he's trying to run it like a military uh, installation, you know. 
event. But the problem with that is that kids have a mind of their of their own, and oh, yeah. they're not going to listen to a soldier. And so he's he was just an idiot guy running a daycare, <laughs> sort of like a sad sack running. A exactly. Daycare. Well, he was this big, gruff drill sergeant, uh -huh. and the kids are like, you know, blowing snot bubbles at him. That might work. Okay, so we're going to go to commercial right now, and when we come back, we're going to go over upcoming convention stuff. A lot of conventions announced brand new stuff. Then we're going to go to uh, charity work, and then we'll get Screwball in here to talk with us and you and your questions from Mr. Terry Klassen. So we'll be right back in about a minute and a half. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> Since the beginning of time, the elite of Equestria have longed for pony fashions that truly express the essence of their very souls. Patiently waiting decades, no, centuries, for the perfect pony gown. Today, at long last, Equestria, your wait is over. Let's hear it for the breathtaking designs of Pony Valzone. Ready! Certainement, Spike. All your ponies, be sure to visit the shop in Ponyville. For the rest of us, be sure to pick up the t-shirts, the bags, or even the posters from willowfine.com. That's right, willowfine.com for all your pony needs. And remember, Carousel Boutique, where every fashion says chic, unique, and magnifique. Mwah. having a wonderful conversation here during the commercial but that's rarity's boutique down there in ponyville rarity sent me an email saying that her spring line is done her spring line is out on the sales floor for all you ponies in ponyville go check out the bright beautiful spring line that rarity has for you and all you humans out there head up to we love fine for all the t-shirts bags and other things that you need with your favorite ponies on them like this one i have on right now so with that we're going to convention season. Convention season is almost here, like a month away. We have BabsCon. Uh, just a month from now is BabsCon. There's lots going down at BabsCon, trust me. But that is April 18th through 20th, Easter weekend. The list I'm about to say is long. I might have to take a breath in the middle of it, so bear with me. <sighs> Andrea Libman, Tara Strong, Kathy Westluck, Nicole Oliver, Peter New, GM Barrow, M.A. Larson, Amy Keating Rogers, Megan McCarthy, Brian and Brianna Drummond, Jason Thiessen, Big Jim Miller, Josh Haber, Natasha Levenger, Andy Price, now Heather Breckel, Tony Fleece, and Heather Nuther of the comics team are also coming. That's a lot of people to meet here in sunny San Francisco. You need to come because they have all kinds of stuff. I have a registration code for you, 10% off, so manly 10, that's S O. M-A-N-L-Y, the number 10, code gets you 10% off any registration. And remember, registration closes April 4th, so get on it. Music, you want music? They just announced Nam Festival. That's two nights of epic music, killer music. Silva Hound's going to be here. Omnipony, Mike the Microphone, Taps, Cyril, Fanning, Derpidity, the list goes on and on. You can't miss that either. A cool contest called The Voice Equestria. It's a voice acting contest. Get your, check the webpage for it, but the deadline is the 31st of this month for entry, so get on that. Now, everybody knows that one snowflake and myself will be going on an epic hoof wrestling match. I got his reply to my last promo. We're about to play it right now. We'll see what he has to say. Be right back. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, big man lifting your tires. Scared away all the Trixies. You know what? I bet you're only using that thing because it's been so long since you've been in a gym. You probably don't even know where it is anymore, Dusty Bones. And freshly passed tank? 
Brother, my shirt has seen more sweat in my warm-ups than most people see in their entire workouts. Yeah, that's right, brother. I am a snowflake. That's because I am one of a kind, brother. One of a kind. When I was created, the Lady Faustacorn was so impressed, she broke the mold and had Larson give the mold maker wings. The time approaches. Bronies will come, and Bronies will witness your downfall. I am a strong horse, and come BabsCon 2014, I will be bringing my horsepower, and I will take you down. You will go down, brother. You will go down. Come on, Derby. Let's go. Come on, Derby. I don't want to forget you. I mean, I'd be really sad if I... Yeah! <laughs> Dusty bones, eh? Mmm. Yeah, you seem to like that little thing for me, don't you? Well, you know what? Ain't no bones in here, buddy. It's all muscle. And I spent all weekend building your doom. I've got an arm wrestling table ready for you. That's epic. Bring it, Tyler. Because we're gonna we're gonna do for we're gonna do you know we're gonna we we'll probably turn this into a charity event. You know what? I think we're gonna turn this into a charity event. So stay tuned out there. Charity will happen. But we go forward. TrotCon, June 20th through 22nd in Columbus, Ohio. Emily Tay, Peg Sisters Live, Pixel Kitties, Yorbeat Brony, Cyril the Wolf. Tons of people are going to be there. Andrea Libman is going to be there. Peter New is going to be there. And Silver Slinger and Animated James, who did our uh, dentist commercial on the show, will be there. Everfree Northwest, July 4th to 6th, 2014 in Seattle. Marika, Georgia Ball, Heather Neufler, and just announced... Michael Dobson. That's right. Bulk Biceps himself, friend of the program, was here two weeks ago. We'll be there. So don't miss that. BronyCon, August 1st to 3rd, 2014, back in Baltimore. Reg is open. Hotel Reg is open. You better get your hotel because pff, those go fast. Kazumi Evans, Daniel Ingram, and Shannon Can... Oh, yeah, sorry. Shannon Chan Kent. God, why do we always get that wrong? Katie Cook, Tony Fleece, Heather Breckel, Tabitha St. Germain will be there now. Galicon. Over in Ludwigsburg, Germany. August 2nd and 3rd. Tickets are on sale. Nicole Oliver will be there. Living Tombstone will be there. Brony Can. August 22nd, 24th. Richmond, B.C., Canada. Um, Amy Meberson will be there. Check that one out. Lots going on. DerbyCon South is ramping up. Grand Brony Gala has Kathy Westluck. So many places. To, so many things to do. So many places to be. Anywhere in this country. If you want to do pony stuff, it is happening. So get out there and do it. Charity. Okay, we had something happen um, on the charity side, which was uh, the first giving page for Bernie Granny accidentally got canceled. Well, not canceled, but got uh, ended. So what we did is we, we did a new page. Okay, so everybody who donated to the Bernie Granny original page is still in for all the giveaways that we have over here. But because of that happening, and we have a new page up right now, I'm going to extend for another two weeks donations to the brony granny fund okay because i don't want people saying oh well i couldn't get in blah 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 because it was down well you got another two weeks now so if you want to get any of this awesome stuff over here then get in okay we got new stuff actually a good friend bot 117 from england sent me this 10 count them 10 packs of the collectible card game 10 packs of those he sent just for this so that's another giveaway that's part of that and our friend Michael Dobson sent me extra autographs. Extra. So I have this one right here. So I think I'm going to throw that in the pile too. So if you want one of these, then get your money into the Brony Granny Fund. So go over to manlybrony.com. Click the link to the new page if you haven't already on the old page. You don't have to do it again. If you've already given some money to Brony Granny, you don't have to do it again. You're already in. But if you haven't yet... Go over there to manlysbrony.com, click the link, go over there and give a couple of bits. And then you're in for all of this stuff we got going on. Peter New stuff, all kinds of great stuff. So get over there. So moving on, Terry, Terry Klassen is, let me pick this time because he was a very busy man the other day. So he said, go ahead and pick <laughs> one, Dusty. And so we picked 
Day's End Farm Horse Rescue. And they're from the East Coast. Uh, we're not talking AJ and Big Mac. No, horses on farms do lots and lots of work. Um, it's a real deal. Horses are still an important part of most farms uh, and ranches. Most farms take good care of their horses, but some can't or don't. And those horses get rescued, and they get brought to these people, and they need help to take care of those horses. So what we are going to do is give them a good, nice push so they can get some alfalfa and some hay and some stuff. Whatever those horses need, veterinary care, anything. So we're going to give them a little bit of a push. This isn't a cartoon. These horses are real, and they need some help. So with that giveaway, anything, five bits are over. We're going to reach into the bag of awesome over here. Look, pony pencils. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got another one of these journals. We got another little box with the girls on it. And let's see what else we got in here. Got some stickers. But not only that. That's just, you know, the awesome stuff that our friend Dave got for us. So that's going to be in the pile. But this Discord box from Enterplay is going to be part of the initial $5 or more give. So that all that stuff if you give five bucks or more. Now, if we hit 500 bills, 500 bits, I got something over here I think you're going to like. It was just released a little while ago. Fungo Trixie. This is brandy new from Hot Topic. I just got it the other day. So Trixie Funko. If you can't find these, you can now get one if you give us a little bit of bits and we make over 500 bones. So that is also in the mix if we make $500. Terry, I don't know if you sign autographs anymore or if you have any... Oops, sorry, I had my mute on. I was oh. I was listening. Uh, no, yeah, I, I do. I have no problem with that. No problem with, with signing an autograph? Nope. You got any? Okay, how about this? Uh, how about you sign an autograph for that $500? Sure. Awesome. You get a Terry Class and autograph. Hard to come by. Terry Class and autograph also for that $500. So I will get that on my way to me, and we will have that also if we crack $500 for the horsies. So cool. with that, we are now done with charity for the week next week is gonna be a huge next next show excuse me is gonna be a huge charity because we're gonna do bernie granny and then we're gonna do an, uh, we're gonna do this one so lots of giveaways in the next show and that would be april 7th so make sure you come back for that and with that i need to find screwball because he's somewhere screwy 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 <laughs> screw screw no i'm not here oh <laughs> screwball why are, you, uh, why are you hiding under the desk again? Because it's fun. Stop. <sighs> and it's legal. And it's, and it's he's, legal. And it's legal. He's always he's always down there licking the Cat Five cables. God, you still bring that up, don't you? Well, you know, it ruined the whole show. Well, it didn't ruin it actually. It made it freaking hilarious. But you know, and they still don't taste like blueberry. And I tried it, so you can't you oh, can't tell me it, it does. Oh, okay, you got me through yeah, that. Yeah, I got you there, didn't I? What are you talking about? Saskatoon berries? Yeah. Oh, Saskatoon, yes. Saskatoon berries. There Make you go. I'm hungry now. I want some Saskatoon pie. <laughs> hey, you, Dusty, you'd mentioned Baltimore. I may be yes. going to that one. <gasps> I've never gone to, I've never allowed myself to go to one, but I may go to that one. Oh, really? You're going yeah. go to you're gonna go to BronyCon? Yeah. Ooh. I'm not sure. Brony so I Con think I not, think my agent was bugging me to go, and so I I'm maybe. Not, I'm that. not sure BronyCon wants us to let that out. No. Okay. Don't let me know. Okay. I won't, I won't let you know. Okay, He's not. Sorry. You know what? Terry Classen is not going to BronyCon. <laughs> He's not. Okay. Okay. At, at this moment in time. At this exactly. moment in time, he's not going to BronyCon. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> so with that, Maybe. with that, I'm sure we have plenty of questions. From yeah, the so live much. studio audience chatty box. There's so much. Mr. Terry Classen. There's so much. <laughs> There's so much. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying that over and over. Um, uh, so where should I start with this? I'm just thinking. Uh, I, I, not much preparation suddenly. Um, <laughs> so I'll just bring this one from uh, Imperius. Question for Terry. As a voice actor, are there any uh, voice preparations that you had to go through or go through uh, now to get ready to uh, voice a certain character? 
Oh, it's basically is what I was talking about before is when you when you get when you audition for a part is to really read the sides, you know, the the little page that you get. Read as much as you can about the character, understand the character, and then understand the dialogue that you're gonna be reading. Because if you do that, that's half the battle. So it's just basically coming up with not the first thing that comes out of your you know, out of your brain about, oh, this character would sound like this, because everybody will do that one. Do the second or third idea that you have. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. Um so this one's from uh oh um sorry, God. Uh, I, I don't know how to say this name. <laughs> um I more it's it's some weird language. Uh more more sex mouse. Um Mr. Clausen. <laughs> Is that how you say it? What? I don't know. What? It, I, Oh, let me just type it out for you in Skype, and then you guys figure it out for yourself. Because this is this one's even harder than that Japanese one I had to read out. <laughs> Morcio? Really? The X is silent. Okay. <laughs> it looks French to me. It looks French to me. Excuse Morso. me, but I'm Morso. I'm, Morso. I I might be Canadian, but I don't know anything French. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay. But, uh, question. The question is, uh, what is slash was your most favorite show to voice in? There you go. You know that I love that question, and the reason why is a long time ago there was Baby Looney Tunes. Yes. Were auditioned in Vancouver. Yes. And I wanted more than anything to be on that show, and I got to be Baby Sylvester, and I was that was my proudest moment in animation. Period. Cool. Yeah. Wow, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, so that was so cool. I just really, I, I, we, you know, we didn't work with her, but June Foray, who was the original mm -hmm. voice on all those old Warner Brothers shows, she actually did the, the, the recording down in L.A. So it was really cool to hear your voice. You'd be saying something, it's baby with Sylvester. You'd be saying, oh, Granny, it's so hot in here. Can we go outside and play? And then you hear jo June Foray answer you. It was amazing. Wow. Yeah. Oh That's cool. That'd, that'd, I love that. That'd be like me take, doing like a gym session with like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Uh, oh, so this one is from uh, Nora Mermaid uh, for Terry. Who is the most interesting person you have worked with? Interesting? Yeah. Hmm, that's a good question. You know, you know what? The most intriguing person was Neil deGrasse Tyson. Hmm. He, you know, he's a physicist. He's now yeah. on, um, what's the show? Crap. Cosmos, yeah, which is Cosmos. on Fox on Sunday night. Yep. He's, a, he's a physicist. He's based, I think he's out of New York, but we had him on an episode of Martha Speaks mm. and he was so cool. The guy is an amazingly brilliant man. Cool. So that was sort of my greatest brush with Brandy, Brainiac. Nice. That, that, that made no sense, but I mean, he was, he was, <laughs> he was really cool. Cool. Next. Um, this one's hard. Terry, have you ever been to a convention before? No. Oh, oh this is... Uh, <laughs> this question's going to be awkward no. now. <laughs> well, that means that autograph's going to be very, very hard to come by. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, so uh, I, I, I'm I'm still to just ask this one. Um, this is from Trailblaze to all. With con season coming up, what is your favorite convention memory? I've never gone. He's never, never gone. That's to why it's so awkward. <laughs> no, no, no. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I think, I think mine over the last. I mean, everybody knows that my original favorite one is when the two little girls came and gave me a hug at the first BronyCon I went to in New Jersey. But I think over the last year, I think my my favorite was actually singing on stage at the next BronyCon when I got to sing with Cyril the Wolf and and uh, and all those guys. You know, it, it was it was really a highlight to be able to entertain people live on a stage. It was That's really, cool. really great. I mean, I didn't sing great until the second half of the song, but it was like, okay, nerves, nerves, nerves. Okay, now I'm fine. Blast. <laughs> and it was like, okay, and then, then at the end of the song, it was just, just great. It was just at that first nervous verse. It was like, okay, I'm fine. You know, no one's going to kill me. Everyone's having a great time. Let's just blow. So it was uh, being on stage live at BronyCon, that second BronyCon I went to, it was just the one in Baltimore. That one was awesome. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, mine would have to be, of course, the Vegas, the oh, Vegas, the Vegas uh, party. The Vegas party we put on. 
Standing at the bar, shooters, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see here. Um, ooh, so this one's from Firemane. Now, here's the thing, Terry, is that Firemane, he makes these amazing wood carvings. Yes. Oh, cool. And he was wondering if you wanted a carving of your character that you voiced, Apple Slice. Oh, I'd love that. That'd be so cool. Now, I don't know in terms of contact. I, th I think uh, I think he'll, uh, he'll go we'll me. talk after show. We'll talk, we'll talk after, after show. Or, yeah. yeah, I'll give you my I'll give you my agent's address yeah, and everything. Ra yeah, Spike, it's Ralph. Okay. Yeah, you've gone through Ralph before. It's Ralph. Yeah, Ralph at Red. Yep. Awesome. Um, but thank you for that. That was really cool. Yeah, they're, they're amazing carvings. I got one of my own. Dusty has his. He yep. basically gives gave to like so many voice yep. actors. That man is busy. Yep. <laughs> he made he made the the epic world championship hoof wrestling belt, which will be in my hands here in a couple of weeks. I would be honored. I in thank life. you so much. Yes. Next. Ooh, is this one's from Andy Mack for Terry. A bit of a trite question, but when you first came when you first came on the show, did you think it was going to be popular with the young male demographic at all? Not necessarily to the degree it has done, but at all. You know that again. That's really an interesting question. It, no one could could have predicted brownies. There's no one could have predicted it. And I mean, you can go to YouTube and. What's the definition of a brony? And I think so many people have misinterpreted that. Mm. You couldn't have guessed that. And, and uh, I, I think it's great, you know, to have a following like that. And it's not, you know, it's, it's you know, if you're a brony and a fan, I think that's great. Pardon my mechanical keyboard nonsense. <laughs> you can just hear it. Just... <laughs> <laughs> we get that during recording sessions a lot. People that are Skyping in, you can hear them typing all the time. Oh. That's the thing. That's the Keyboarding. Problem. That's a problem with mine is is my job of being on the chat thing and, and having to talk with people while I'm doing this. And yes. it's like, of course, I had to get the loudest keyboard in, in the yeah. world. Yes. In known man history. <laughs> known man history. <laughs> uh, um, so this, this one is from Parasol. A question for all. If you could live in any fictional TV show world, what would you choose and why? Wow. <laughs> that's a good step for huge but i'd want to be the human in, in you know that you know the show stepford wives yeah i'd want to be the human though okay that, that's where i'd live because it would be the or or pleasantville <laughs> no no do you remember that movie yeah yeah i don't know that's a good question stepford hmm. where do they live someplace in connecticut somewhere well if i wanted adventure i would be in the village on the prisoner Oh, wow. If I wanted adventure. If I didn't want adventure, I would basically be running a blacksmith shop somewhere outside of Ponyville. Wow. Yeah. You're more adventurous than I am. I just wanted to live in a place where everybody was normal. <laughs> and, like, weirdly normal. Oddly normal. Oddly that normal. made no sense. Yeah. There's no sense of adventure in my, my answer. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> I really... <laughs> No, I, I know where you'd be, Screwy. You'd be an assassin. You'd be an yes. assassin in Assassin's Creed. You know exactly. I, I know you're exactly going to bring that up be. because of a certain thing that I made. Yeah, which is it? coming up in about seven minutes. So hang out, people. Yeah, I got to You know what, Screwy? Gonna... Episode three is coming up in seven minutes. Yeah, I, I, I might be an assassin. I, I should say be an assassin for in, in a, like the My Little Pony universe because that just sounds dark as all That's hell. Dark. <laughs> That's dark. He's so going you know postal. what? You know what? I'll be an assassin on the anime Black Lagoon. There, there you go. go. There you go. Oh, yeah, Black Lagoon, awesome. Love Black Lagoon around here. Oh, it's so good. Yes. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Yeah. Ooh, so this one's from Mario Laser. Uh, question for Terry: What was your favorite episode of Dragon Ball Z that you recorded slash watched on TV? Oh man. You know what? I, I wish I had an answer to you. I don't know. There's about 15 <laughs> billion of them. Yeah. Well, see, I wrote, I rewrote. I shouldn't say I wrote. I rewrote a whole pile of them and, and then obviously voiced, uh, you know, like 26 episodes with Krillin. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what? One, one single episode doesn't pop to mind. I mean, and it was also like, you know, 10, 15 years ago that we did that. Oh, yeah. 
You know what my personal faves is? It would have to be uh, Goku fighting Frieza. Very last bit, which I, I to this day I still laugh my butt off of uh, Goku um, saying, I'm going to slap some sense into you, and he just starts wailing on him like, with slaps <laughs> over and over again. Uh, I, can't, I couldn't breathe when I watched it as a kid, and I, st- I, still, I still laugh my butt <laughs> off seeing it still. It was, it was such a big show, too. I was amazed how big Dragon Ball Z was. A very good friend, Jack's Blade, is a Dragon Ball Z phenomenal fanatic. Yeah, yeah. I loves wow. that show. Yeah, was that was fun to do. Yep. Yeah. It's huge. Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Talk, ho, ho, ho. Uh, huh? Huh? Uh, <laughs> oh, this is the first. Okay. Oh, really? So this one is from Flufflepuff. <gasps> And the question uh, from him is, is <laughs> no. <laughs> did you really? I did. Terry no. does no thing what's going on, but we'll no, explain it in a minute. Uh, okay, what does what? Fluffle want to know? Fluffle wants to know, what's your favorite kind of taco? A taco? Taco. Yeah. Be, uh, I don't know. It would be, I just like straight up beef tacos with tons of cheese. Straight up beef taco. Yeah. Oh, so good. And then, you know, if you go to Taco Bell, the yep. menu changes all the time. Oh, so. yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't want my taco wrapped in freaking nachos. Or, or, you know, or you know what? You know, I'll tell you, you know. what. America, in the United States, American, Mexican, you know, which is Fusion. kind of what yep. we call Mexican food. Yeah. Uh, they have such great restaurants. In Vancouver, mm-hmm. they're, they're starting these taquerias or uh, taquerias. Correct. And they're trendy, and I hate that crap. Uh-huh. I like going to like a real family run in L.A. Yeah. Going to like a real Mexican come to, restaurant. Come to San Jose. Come to San Jose, buddy, because we got yeah. Mexican food like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, here in San it, Jose. It, I love I love going to the states. We go across the border, and there's a place called Me Mexico in Bellingham, which is mm. great. And in Vancouver, it's far, few and far between if there's anything. Wow. Yeah, so here I in San Jose. Mexican food. You can't throw a dead stick without hitting a taqueria. A good one. A yeah. Good one. Here they just get too fancy. There's too many hipsters going to uh, yeah. to, the, the, to the taquerias here. Mm-hmm. Next. Um, where did I put you? <laughs> I'm uh, oh, yeah. By, by the way, the the whole Flufflepuff thing, yeah. just to let you know uh, of Terry, yeah. is, is Flufflepuff makes these amazing animations amazing. and comics. Like, amazing. And I am such a fan. And basically, Flufflepuff doesn't speak little to no English. She just makes noises. Yeah, with her tongue. And, and every time Dusty does it, I, I crack up. And No, don't you dare. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Stop yeah, it. Yeah, if you, if you, it, I'll show you some stuff after the show, Terry. But the, the gentleman that does Flufflepuff is amazingly talented and very funny. And awesome. basically he came up with this character, Flufflepuff, which is, which is a, a pony from Ponyville, which is basically all fluff. And oh, wow. has fallen in love with Queen Chrysalis. And they live together with Dan from Dan Versus and Princess Twilight Sparkle in the tree library. And, and hilarity ensues. Well, that's very cool. Yeah, it's, it's very funny. I'll, I'll, I'll induce you to it later. It's, it's, it's funny. So, awesome. next. <laughs> um, so, ooh, I never, okay, I never knew this. I'm from Flair Cor- uh, Cobra uh, to Terry. I see you did many voices in the Mega Man anime. Which character was your favorite to voice? In which show? Mega Man. Uh, Mega Man anime? Oh, man, I didn't even remember that I did that. We did two versions of Mega Man. We did, uh, we did a live action, or a live action. We did uh, uh, one that was done in English, and I played Cut Man in a, the other characters, but the uh, the ADR, I can't even remember doing that. Wow, that's crazy! Holy cow, these are good questions. I wish I had an answer. Way back. Yep. I, I have a, I have a very intelligent and very well that will go out of their way to find out really good questions. Yeah, I, I love my audience. They're they're yeah. No, it's crazy, yeah. crazy questions. Yep. Next. They have some really amazing stuff. That's why I love reading all of them. It's so much fun. <laughs> um, uh, ooh, so this one's from uh, a cipher. Now, not so much of a question per se, but here's the thing. Um, his friend Fiona, I probably said that wrong and spelled differently, 
But uh, she's been having a hard time with bullies, depression, and more. Mm -hmm. I've been helping her, but it would be really nice and cool if all of us could give a shout out to her. Oh, absolutely. Hey, Big yeah. hello. Hey, yeah. You know, you know, that's the whole thing about bowling. They just came out with an app, which is mm -hmm. crazy uh, for, for you know, obviously for your iPhones or whatever, where they can do, um, you can send somebody a, a text and, and, and it's anonymous. And I just, this whole bowling thing's just got out of hand. Mm -hmm. And th there's such moronic people out there. There, I guess, what was it last week? Some kid in, uh, was it South Carolina, North Carolina? North Carolina. Yeah, that got bullied for having a, a, a backpack. A, yeah, my, my little funny backpack, and go, and then the principal has the gall to say that yeah. you know he, you know, that was just asking for it, and I'm going, no, no, people should be allowed to be people, and and uh, if you disagree, you know, I think here's the thing about bullying, and I'm grandstanding here a little bit, but you know, if you see bullying going on, you have to take the initiative and stand mm -hmm. up for the person that's being bullied. Yep. Because you can't just walk away from it, you know. Put your arm around that person and and stand with them because that is mm -hmm. just crap. And and it just goes, you know. There's stupid people people out there, and you can't tell a person he's stupid because you know what? They're too stupid to understand that they're stupid. I that needs to be a bumper sticker, right there. <laughs> well, it's true. You can't tell and stupid people are stupid because they're too stupid to understand. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it, they'll never get it. They'll, they'll never, never it. understand the hurt it, that they do. It, no. It's. I've said it on this program before, people. If you see somebody getting bullied, you have to step in because they need help. Be the hero. Get in there. Tell the bully to buck off and take that person aside and say, you know, you don't need to listen to that. You don't. Because everybody, not everybody is a special little snowflake, but nobody should be have to put up with that. Nobody. Nobody. I put up with it as a kid myself for years, decades of that. Until I was in my 20s, I had to put up with that kind of stuff. And if my experiences can help anybody out there, then going through it was worth it. So, no. 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 If somebody comes up and starts bullying you verbally, you tell them, I don't have to, I don't have to listen to you. Why? Because you don't matter in my life. I... You know, high school kids who are getting bullied by these other people in high school. Who cares? Okay? You're not exactly. going to see these people in 10 years. Exactly. And, and unless you, know you go back what? to your high school reunion. And that's it. And I, you, you know, know what? It, it, when you confront those people at your high school reunion again, it's sort of like, you know, chances are you'll have been more successful in life than they'll ever be. Yeah. The, the, the thing is, there's a lot of people from my high school that I was friends with that I now get back in, together with on Facebook every now and then. But even then, it's still only now and then, right? Yeah. We, aren't, we aren't the greatest of friends. I've moved away and went on with my life. Yeah. And they've gone on with their lives. And you'll do the same. You tell that person, I don't need you in my life. I don't need the negativity you bring to my life. Go away. I'm going to be over here. You know? I don't need you to tell me all this stuff. I've, I'm going to do my thing. You go do your thing. Goodbye. I don't need you. And if they won't stop, you go to a person of authority. You go to the teacher and say, this per I've told this person to leave me alone. They won't leave me alone. And they should take care of it. Should take care of it. I'm like North Carolina. But they should take care of it. Yeah. That's sad. It is. It's really sad that, that a school district could say, why don't you at least leave that home? It's, it's a trigger. It's not a trigger. But it's a freaking backpack he uses to take his lunch to school That's but you're, if you're trigger. being a bully if you are being bullied keep yes. your chin up it's not yes. the end it don't no. make it the end because there's things in life that are going to be amazing later on absolutely amazing i've done amazing things in my life if you I, know what here's the I, other thing a lot of people that are told they can't be this and can't do that those are the ones have to say you know what you can't tell me what i can or can't be you yeah. have to be the one that's going to say you know what yeah you just said that well you're wrong you're wrong yeah. i've i've been all over the world for business i do this show entertain you people i've met wonderful wonderful people in all kinds of different facets of my life from motorcycles to what i do now to the voice actors to 
other you know other people. I've done all this wonderful stuff in my life. If I had let the bullies tell me that I couldn't do this and I didn't try, I wouldn't be here entertaining you and taking care of charity stuff and talking to wonderful people like Terry Glasson and bringing them to you. I wouldn't be here if I listened to that. Don't listen to it because it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it, it, it'll, it'll change over it'll time. It'll change over time. Trust me, it will change over time. Next. That's awesome. Uh, sorry, I was, I, was, I was playing mute because I was doing a crap ton of typing. <laughs> um, if I could just get myself back together again. Um, Do it. Okay, so this one is from James <laughs> Justice! <laughs> sorry, Terry, yeah. but James is our resident superhero on our show who saves us from the cornflake. <laughs> the evil, evil cornflake. Of course, not not the original cornflake. These original cornflake is awesome, but those those dime store budget brand cornflakes, ugh. Oh god. Evil, evil cornflakes. <laughs> what does James want to know this week? Ah, uh, for Terry, what 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 was? Uh, uh, so this one is uh, what what was it? Uh, why he, he spells spell so I'll just try to reverb it. Uh, what was what would you consider to be the most interesting or favorite thing you have voice directed? That's a good question. Uh, good question. You know what? Uh, one of the shows that I really had fun voice directing was the latter episode, the Johnny Test. Mm. It was just fun to work on. When you, when you say latter, well, I, you know I thought, what? I thought, Scott, got, I thought they got renewed. Well, yeah. Well, Scott Fellows was the creator of the show, and he did a lot of the sort of directing on the early shows and then later on he went on to do some he was uh, doing another show for Nickelodeon okay. and uh, that allowed me to sort of take the reins uh -huh. and I have just enjoyed Johnny Test was such a fast paced well written show uh -huh. it was crazy cool but that one's still going right they, they got oh yeah yeah up. yeah well, we're not recording any new ones they were talking about possibly another season I haven't heard anything on that oh okay okay next Oh, I'm multitasking now. I'm afraid I'm on my phone. <laughs> um, so this one is from... Oh, where, where did I put you? I don't know. I had it right here. Okay, here it is. Um, ooh, so this one's from Game Angel uh, 147. Question for you, Terry. What is the most frustrating part of your job? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh, that's a really good question. It's when actors don't read their scripts and they plan <laughs> their phones... And they play on their phones during a session. Ooh. Oh, no, that's exactly what I've been doing. Now I feel <laughs> awful. <laughs> no, you, you can always tell an actor that doesn't read their scripts, and it's so blatant. What they do is they'll come to the session, they'll do their lines, and uh, and then they'll basically be so off on what the, the characters say. And then they'll, uh, when you do the second pass, all of a sudden they'll get them because you have to explain to them what the character is doing. Mm -hmm. And they sort of try to make it look like, oh, no, no, I read it. Yeah, no, you yeah, haven't. Yeah, no, you didn't. <laughs> so if, that's I'm, that's. I'm, the... I'm sorry, but if I ever got a job as a voice actor, I would be there so freaking prepared that you, you could I could read everybody else's line. Oh, there's some be... uh, there's some voice actors that are so bang on. I mean, Sam be... Vincent, Tabitha, Brian Drummond, uh, 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 do, 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 uh, Andrea Lidman. I mean, to name just a few. Those they come in very prepared. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really key to being a good voice actor or anything in life. Oh, absolutely. It's just knowing what you got to do. You, yeah. you know, this is your job. Uh, yeah. It takes 20 minutes to read a script. L luck, luck is made by you, people. Yeah. There was an old commercial a long time. You have one chance to make a first impression. Yes, one chance. You know, and that's sort of like you got to be prepared. And what was there There's something else where that uh, you got to be prepared for, you know, it isn't luck. You have to be prepared for that moment. Mm -hmm. And like, that's what that's what I say to anybody that wants to get into the business. Be prepared. That's like this show, people. I spend a goodly amount of my week prepping for you guys so I can do an hour and a half of entertaining you. I, I yeah, people do. I probably spend I probably spend five to six hours thinking about what's going to happen on this show, and then you know two days basically putting it together so that I can ha entertain you for an hour and a half. That's not luck. That is preparation. 
it's like going to see it's like going to see a really good comedian and yeah. it, make, it makes it look like he just made the stuff up as he's doing it no it's honed you know yeah. it's it's very prepared hours and hours in front of yeah. a mirror hours and hours in front of you know their friends telling jokes did was that good did that come across should i change it here should i change it there same way with voice actors i've talked to peter new and he says it, it he spends hours you know just with himself in the bathroom working on his voices and but you gotta ask that's himself, preparing what's he doing? that's being prepped. what's he doing in the bathroom yeah what's he doing in the bathroom you know talking just like saying Samuel. No, he's always prepared too. I mean, most of the cast, I'd say the the vast majority of the cast of My Little Pony is very prepared. Yeah, so, yeah. You make your own luck, people. You don't sit yeah. back and wait for it to happen. You make your own luck. So, next. Uh, so that's from some pearl. It's more of a comment um, about about uh, about the horse uh, about the workhorse charity. I yes. support that. Our neighbors own workhorses, and this is uh, all farmland. I support it all the way. Uh, some of us come here to struggle with the funds to care for some of the animals out here. We all thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Absolutely. Very cool. Yep. Very good choice. We love horses around here. I came from a rural part of Michigan where we had lots of horse farms. I love horses. We had two horses when I was a kid. We had one named Judy and the other named Scalp. I bet Judy was nice and Scalp wanted to scalp you. Scalp was the uh, Scalp was uh, he was a riding horse and he would always run away. He'd always <laughs> jump the fence and we'd have to go chase him. And Judy was a, an old workhorse. That was a game to him though. He jumped the fence and make you chase him. He was playing tag. Well, we lived on the prairie, so literally you could look to the horizon in any direction and to look for the horse. He might be two miles away, but you could see this horse silhouetted on the horizon. <laughs> so you got to get your truck and go get him. He, he, Terry, he, Terry, you know, you know, you know the uh, the saying of Saskatchewan. You can see your dog run away for two weeks. <laughs> well, no, it's true. Though. Where I live, it was. I think it's known as the world's flattest plain. And literally, if you stood in the yard, you can turn around in any direction and see a tree 23 miles away. Wow. That's crazy. Stupid. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. I did, I did a lot of horse riding in my, in my time as well. And, oh I take it that's boy. why neither of you live there anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll meet you by that tree next week. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> next. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, I guess I like one of those throat singers. Um, goodness. Uh, okay, here we go. This one's from Trailblaze. Uh, to all, would you like to go to a con outside up in North America? Hey, yeah. Peter New was just one in Australia. Yep, he just oh, went to one in Australia. So <laughs> Andrea went to the same one. Um, oh, Andrea's there too. I didn't know. Andrea was there. I, I. Nicole Oliver's going to Germany. Wow. Going to Elizabeth. Uh, Peter New went to that one last year. I would love to go to an overseas con. I mean, I would, I mean, I'd love to go to like Crystal Fair in Finland. Oh my, would, would that be awesome? You get the vodka. Get the, Finlandia. Well, well, yeah, well, I've got, <laughs> I've got Norse in my bloodline. So I'm like, I would love to go there. Holy cow. You can eat reindeer. Oh yeah. That would be awesome. Reindeer burger. Mm. Yeah, I go snowshoeing go snow in the summer. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> reindeer is the only thing I haven't actually ate yet. I've had caribou, I've had moose, I had deer, I had a uh... snake, bear. S snake tastes like chicken. Literally, tastes exactly like chicken. Yeah, my brother ate it. I've never tried it. Yeah. I had croc. I had frog. I've had a uh, calamari. I've had all sorts of cool uh, out there food. My, so, my dad shot a black bear, so we had black bear for like an entire year. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, tasty. Tasty bear. Mm, very tasty. Next. Um, I'll also bring this one from Trailblaze. Uh, oh, you know what? You know what, Screwy? You know what we haven't done? <gasps> what? I'm late. <laughs> I'm late. I haven't, I don't, I haven't played the Screwy, screwy bit. I'm, I'm a bad no, host. You bad had host. one job. You had one I've job. Had, I had one, one job, people. One job. Dusty, uh, one job. So, one job. we are going to play, you know what, Screwy? Episode three. Right here, right now. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in 2 and 30. You know what's great? Feel the snowman. man. Elsa? Do you want to build a snowman? Come on, let's go and play. I never see you anymore. Yeah, I have no idea what I just created here. We got... A very scary looking face here. 
some really freakishly long arms. <laughs> this thing needs to be part of its misery. Well, that was pretty easy. Oh. You know what's really screwy? I'm trying to talk with little to no emotion. Like what? Okay, I gotta do it. No. Oh. Yeah, it's really. <laughs> I can't do it. You know, it's really scary. Trying to talk like mod. Middle to no emotion. I can't do it. This is way too hard. I can't do it. You know what I need? I need lesson from mod as to how to talk a little no emotion. Like that. I can't do it. It's way too damn hard. And why am I spinning around? Because I'm trying to make it... I don't know. Well, look, you're gonna get a nice view of my room. And, uh, uh, wait, here's the mirror, here's the mirror! Oh, look at this mirror! Oh my god! Getting dizzy now. Okay. I got nothing. Screwy's got nothing. It's like, <laughs> d d Screwy, when you send me these things, you gotta give me more than, like, I got nothing. And no, shut the camera off. Else. For the longest time, you I was know? trying to figure out how to do her voice without laughing. It's impossible. <laughs> It's impossible so to do her voice. The whole end of that, Terry, is is Screwball trying to do Mod Pie's, you know, <laughs> really monotone. Oh, hang on here, sorry. There we go. Hello, Terry Klassen's house. <laughs> I'm sorry, Terry's busy right now with an interview. It, that's what he'll, I did. He'll be back in 20 minutes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Live TV, you know. Live TV. Anything can happen. Anything. Exactly. Anything. Anything can happen. You know? In fact, on the April 23rd show, anything might happen. Because it's one, it's the day after my birthday. It's the day after BabsCon, and we have a show. So, and I think it's actually our third anniversary? Second anniversary. Second. Second, Second. anniversary. So, yeah. We've been doing this for two years. Holy so, cow. There'll be awesome things happening on that show. Oh, I'm so only excited. About the way. Let's keep going, screwy. Questions. Uh, um so this one is from okay, I uh PFMIV red card. Um question for all. Have you have uh have any of you been following the 2014 NCAA March Madness tournament? Heck no. <laughs> Not only heck no, I would like to say something even more angry than that, but I can't say that on a PG show. I, I watched one, one game. I watched Stanford and uh, Nebraska. Okay. Was it Nebraska? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. I hate basketball. What a pass. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I played basketball in high school, and you had offense and defense. The guys don't play defense anymore. It's all you know, highlight reel, ESPN. How, how can I dunk over some guy faster? It's all that tennis shoe it must be the shoes mike all that crud it's not a game anymore it's a highlight reel whoever can score the most points how about we have a nice 40 to 50 game okay some defense please you play basketball was, on both had, ends of the floor we had those games like 43 to 23 because nobody could hit the net <laughs> <laughs> you know i can see that um yeah i hate basketball as as it stands today basketball stinks Especially the pro, like especially the pro game. I'm, I'm an ice hockey guy. I so why? I played ice hockey. I played adult league ice hockey here in, in San Jose. Cool. So, yeah, I played ice. I grew up. I grew up in Michigan where I taught myself to skate on a river. In fact, I still have those skates because they were a set of Bauer leather upper beautiful skates that I bought in Canada. And I'm never going to let them go. I'm going to keep putting runners on those things until there's too many holes to put another set of runners in. There's got to be good ankle support in that. Oh, yeah. Love those things. Whew, I'll never get rid of those skates. 
<laughs> yeah. That's what you get when you grow up in the Midwest, people. It's like your favorite hockey stick and your favorite pair of skates. You'll never get rid of. Never. I'll be buried in those skates. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> Next. Um, so this one's from Trailblaze. Um, uh, to Terry, what would you like to do slash see at a convention if you go? Ooh, there you go. You know what? Really interesting fans. Just fun fans. Well, there's a ton of those. Ton of those. <laughs> well, not, not I, you know, I'm always worried about like the ones that just go a little bit too far over the edge. I mean, uh, more power to them because you're an individual. But just the people that really, really just love the show, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we, we we there's a lot of those out there. Or any show. Yeah, there's there's tons of people out there that love the shows and awesome. And just costuming and uh, music and if you have, if you haven't heard some of the fan made music, you're missing out. There's, oh, that's there's cool. Awesome. Oh, awesome there's fan-made such music good there. stuff out there. Oh my lord. Yeah. Mando Pony, Pony Phonic, Acoustic Brony, tons and tons and tons. Wow. Full album. I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna have to research some of this stuff. Yep, research some of that stuff because I you you would be amazed at how much music is out there that's been just you know inspired by you know My Little Pony. It's it's crazy, crazy. <sighs> Next. Ooh, so this one's from Coffee Brony for Terry. When voice acting, do, uh, do you prefer to follow tried and tested methods of distorting your voice for roles, or do you prefer to try odd methods to produce interesting sounds? It all depends. That's a good question. It, it, it depends on the character. I mean, um, it we 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 do change shows. We we do change voices sometimes. But I'd rather I'd rather the character to be able to do the voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we do Max Steel, a lot of the voices are really, you know, uh, fudged around to make them sound different. Like especially the the the, the bad, uh, the sort of the enemy combatants. And I'd rather the people, you know, create the voices because I just think that's more original, mm-hmm. as opposed to you know really throwing effects. We actually do one character on uh, on Max Steel. It's Michael Michael Dobson does it, and we, he actually does a really deep voice and then a high voice, and we do it. Put them together, and then they 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 create a voice um, uh, from that. So it's pretty bizarre. Wow! Wait, yeah. so he so he speaks two different different like he speaks the same line but in two different pitches, and then they put it together. Yeah, yeah. What Whoa. we do is we get when he does the first voice, he'll count it in, and he'll go one, two, three. I have no time for Max Steel. And then he'll hear that back. He'll have the count in, and then he can go over top of that with the the higher pitched voice, which is very hollow. And then they, you know, they'll take that and uh, even, you know, even manipulate that later. Mm. So that cool. sounds really cool. Well, that is crazy. I've never heard anything like that before. I do not have any yeah. time for Max Steel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do yeah, that again. See? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Do that again. I, have to... <laughs> I, love I that. thought it was a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is my evil. My evil director. <laughs> have you guys ever done voices? Have you ever been on? You should throw and submit. You guys should go to LA and, and do stuff. And 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 Scooball could come to Vancouver. I'm actually I'm actually talking with Michael Dobson right now to to, to get some lessons. So you know, here's here's what's really weird is I was just chatting with Flufflepuff and he says I sound like fe- uh, uh, Fix It Felix from Wreck It Ralph, and I'm uh, I've never had <laughs> that sort of uh, sort of compliment in my whole life because because I was just really I what. <laughs> And That's then cool. the most, the one that I get all the time mm-hmm. is everyone says I, I sound exactly like um, Michael Cera. If you've know, if you've ever heard of him, everyone says I sound exactly like him too. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> is he a singer? My, oh, Michael, no, Michael Cera. Oh no, he's a Canadian actor. Oh, that's right. That's he's right. been in tons of movies. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, he is. What was his name? What was the movie where they changed their ID? Uh, what was his? Oh crap! But he's a he's a really good little actor. Nice. Yeah, he's uh, he's been on a, a oh goodness, um, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Yeah. He's the main character on that one. Yeah, that's right. That that guy. Yep, super bad. He's been on super stuff bad. like that. Okay. So. Yeah, that was a movie I was thinking of. Super bad. 
Hey, Scurry. <laughs> so, what? Guess what time it is. Uh, no. <laughs> yep. Just, no. <laughs> yep. Okay. Sorry, dude, but we are at the end of the program, so I need that For one awesome case. last question that you um, saving. So this one's from Mar uh, Margin Line, a uh, question for Terry. What would be one of the most memorable or funny moments you've had while either voicing or directing a show? <laughs> <laughs> Must have been good. He's laughing already. Uh, it was one session where an actor <laughs> was saying a line and he burped during the line and he almost puked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought that was really funny. That, that must have been an awesome I mean, evening been good before. We had before another session. guy that answered actually answered his cell phone during a session. What? <laughs> oh, what? Oh, oh there again. There was another one. This is a classic one in Vancouver. There was a guy, Don Brown. God bless him. You know what Walla is? You know, you know what Walla? When we when Walla is when you do crowd noises and uh -huh, everybody's yeah. like, you know, crowd. Everybody in the background. It's crowd crowd Walla. Yay, cheering and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Well, there's this one character. Don Brown was doing and in brackets it said eat walla and that should have been like you know you're making sounds like you're eating mm -hmm. Don Brown's doing a little killer character and all of a sudden he says the line eat walla in his character's <laughs> voice and it just burst out laughing <laughs> that was great oh my god oh that's hilarious Oh my yeah, God. Those are good awesome. things. Oh God! So, gang, hey, we're at the end of the program. Um, new T-shirt. You guys wanted a T-shirt. You got a T-shirt. So here is the T-shirt that we've had up for a little while. I think I might have Trish do us a new one. We're getting close to needing a new T-shirt, aren't we? But this one has me and Screwball on it, and it has a Redbubble. If you look up Everfree Network on Redbubble, you will find this awesome T-shirt. We want to see you wearing it out there this summer at the conventions that we attend. We would love to see you wearing it. And for your, thank you for your support. Also, if you feel like throwing in uh, a nomination to the Goldie Awards for Babs, for me and Screwball, we would love that. Um, because we do all this for you, and we would love that. Um, and let's see. Thank yous go out to Mr. Klassen, Terry Klassen. Uh, Filming is Magic. You're welcome. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Uh, Filming is Magic, who does our outro. Uh, BabsCon, BronyCon, TrotCon, Everfree Northwest, all the guys. Uh, Care to Win, my wonderful roommate and landlord, Amy, my wonderful girlfriend, who made us an awesome dinner last night. I'm going to have all this goulash for like a week. It's awesome. Uh, I wish you guys could taste this because it's... Oh, oh my God. It's so good. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's awesome. You know what, When Screwball, when you come down here for BabsCon, we're going to make it again because it is, it Ooh, is, it is I like delicious. This. I like this. Delicious. EFN, Screwy, and all you out there who come every time we turn on that camera and make fools of ourselves. We love you. We really do. So with that, we're going to get out of here in just a second when I actually cue up the ending outro. Um, and next show guest, we're going to go fandom this time, the Brony Chef. Mexican pony fan and organizer of the Brony Cookbook that has recipes not only by me, but by Screwball. Also from Andrea Libman and Peter New, and I believe some other big names in the VA fandom. So you guys check that out. We'll be back in two weeks on April 7th with the Brony Chef, and I'm pretty sure we'll have one of those cookbooks to give away. And it might be special, but a special cover that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, maybe. So with that... We're going to see you guys later, and we'll see you in two weeks, so be good. Tell the, bro tell, tell the bullies to go, and if they won't, send them to me. I'll tell them. Ciao. Do, 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 do. Good, good night, night, sweetheart. sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.